popular topic nowadays that most people are seeking for uh, some type of guidance or some type of inspiring words is the fact that most people are uh, troubled by what's going on in the world and people seem to find it hard to find bitachon uh, in God. Now faith, that's one thing. If you are a believer, you are a believer. Bitachon, that's uh, testing your trust. It's two different things. I can believe in God, but not trust in Him. And unfortunately, uh, with all the events in the last few weeks, people are finding it even harder to find bitachon. Why? Because uh, uncertainty. The opposite of bitachon is fear. And where does fear come from? From uncertainty. And again, I mean, not, uh, this is not 100% uh, proof. I mean, fear can come from other places. We're just trying to analyze the order of what happens in a person's mind that causes the person to have no trust in God. So, <clears throat> we have to understand when we want to, to nourish or to fix or to apply something, then I need to also see, in order for me to, to have a, a better way of understanding how to do it, is to see the polarity. That's usually one of the easiest ways that when I want to tackle a certain thing, then look at the polarity, what the polarity how the polarity is affecting the, the thing that I'm focusing on. Because everything in this world has a polarity. So we're focusing on bitachon. I think it's one of the most important things right now to nourish because the next few rounds are going to hit stronger and then we're going to have issues with emuna. It's already, I already seeing the first sprouts of that. Emuna means faith, that I believe in God. And when I'm telling you I'm already seeing the sprouts of it in the last five weeks since the last uh, terror attack, I got dozens of emails of people who are telling me that they are observant, but they're starting to have questions in faith in God with what's going on. So now it's time to really strengthen our bitachon, our trust, because the next round that Hashem is going to push us to a corner, then we're all going to start having problems with faith. Because when you see something real bad in front of your face that you are experiencing, the faith goes out of the window very fast. And I literally heard personally from people in the last few weeks how the vision of what they saw changed their, 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 their faith. They, they don't believe so much in God anymore. Starting all these doubts. If he's such a good God, why would he do such a thing? How can a God that loves us so much can do such a horrible things? Important thing to remember, this is not new. We dealt with these horrible things 80 years ago, 150 years ago, 500 years ago. There's nothing new. It's not that we are different. It's not that we are different. Our grandparents and great-grandparents went through the same thing and worse. So it's not that we are experiencing something that is uh, unfamiliar. We never heard of bodies being burnt. But nevertheless, not so simple to see what's going on in the world and not to fall into fear. Because the uncertainty now is much stronger. What's going to be tomorrow? Is there going to start a war in Lebanon? Is there going to start a war with Iran? Is this war going to finish? Are they going to bring the hostages? Is this going to affect now the entire world economy? What's going to be with my job? What's going to be with my money? People are afraid. So you have to understand one thing, that fear does not exist in the, in the present. Fear only exists in the future. Try to analyze it. It's a little bit uh, heavy to digest, but fear doesn't exist in the present. You are afraid of what's going to happen. And when you're afraid what's going to happen is because you don't know what's going to be tomorrow. What's going to happen? This uh, uncertainty births a lot of fear and a lot of sorrow. That's how it works. And it's not only because of a war. It can be because a person losing their job. Or it can be a person getting a diagnostic, a medical diagnostic that changes completely now his way of life. It can be many things. What's going to be tomorrow, that's what causes you to be afraid. 
I'll give you one quick example that you'll see practically how it works. You remember that I told you that five weeks ago, besides the terror attack, was also the incident with our neighbors and another incident with other neighbors. So I had to go to court. Okay? And uh, luckily for me, after a little bit of uh, investigating in the police, they, they did see, and I hope that's what we want to continue, that we were the ones who were attacked. But nevertheless, I had to go to court. All the way going to court, like a normal human being, I had, how do you call it? Butterflies in the stomach. I, I, inside, doesn't matter who you are and how certain and strong you are, you're going to face something that is not usual, you have a little bit of a, a, a not so good feeling in your stomach. And, uh, and that lasted two, three hours. I don't want to go there, I don't need to deal now with this, I need to see them, and the uncertainty of what's going to happen and how it's going to unfold brings you a little bit uh, to be, I don't know if to say afraid or whatever, I'm just tell telling you how I felt it, it was small, it didn't really affect me. But the second that we walked out of the courtroom and everything was behind, okay, what are we eating for breakfast? So when you are expecting something in the future that you're not going to know the outcome that can affect you in a, in, in a, in a very profound way, something inside is, un, is, is unsettled. Call it fear. Some people it would be extreme as fear. With me it was like just an annoying feeling. Going to somewhere annoying. So what I'm saying here is that the, what causes the person not to have bitachon is the uncertainty of what's going to happen. And when you don't know what's going to happen, that brings to you fear. So what's important to know, the fear is from the future and not from the present. There is a very special book. I have urged many of you to learn it. Maybe we'll start learning it. It's very long. I don't know if we, we're already uh, a year and a half with Shari Ligulim. I don't know what's going to be with this one. If we'll get to start it, if not, I highly recommend each and, around of, each and every one of you to learn from it. It's called Chovat Levavot, Duty of the Hearts. In Shah Bitachon, he says there's something very, very interesting. He says, what's the benefit of Bitachon? You need a benefit with something. If I'm pursuing now, I want Bitachon. And again, Bitachon is trust in God. What's the benefit of trusting in God? That I have the Bitachon. It causes, and I quote, Menuchat Halev. Uh, menuchat Halev will be like a peace of mind to the heart. Lev is the heart. Menucha is rest. It's like, a, you know, quiet. Peace of mind. But it's talking about the heart, not on the mind. But the term in Hebrew is Menuchat Halev. Why specifically the heart and not the mind? Because a lot of people say, I just want a little bit of peace of mind. I need some quiet. I need to get away. I need to clear my mind. And... That's the things that people say. Well, I never heard somebody saying, I got to go to a vacation, I need to clean my heart. I need to clean my mind, right? So, menuchat <clears> halev, <throat> or shalva, menucha, shalva, menucha means resting, shalva, peace. You want your heart to be at peace. And that's what Vitachon brings you, that you are at peace. And not only that, you are not worried about worldly affairs. Such as, not only talking about a war, worldly affairs can be your livelihood, your, your business, your health, the education of the kids, and many other things. These are worldly worries that constantly a person is worried all day long. Monitor yourself for one day and you'll see that you have these worries all day long. What am I going to eat? When am I going to eat? Who am I going to eat with? What am I going to wear? How am I going to pay my bill? Oh, here a bill just came. Shoot, I don't have money. How am I going to pay? All day long you're dealing with all sorts of worldly matters. And it, in many cases, either you deal with it and that's it, or you deal with it and it bothers you. And it makes you very uh, agitated and very not relaxed and very edgy. And Chovat HaLevavot says, Bitachon, the benefit of it, that it brings you Menuchat HaLev. That you, you, peaceful. Everything is peaceful. So, why again specifically the heart and not the mind? 
Because most people, when they're going through something, they attribute it to their mind, not to their heart. But why specifically the heart? Because the heart is what causes emotional movements and motion. Not the mind. I'll repeat it. The emotional movements within you are in the heart. What does it mean emotional movements or motions? Maybe I'm using the wrong terms. What I mean is by you suddenly happy. And you happy, happy, happy. Something happens, whoop, you sad. Something happens, whoop, you excited. This is emotional motions. I can be now whatever. Something will happen, whoop, I'm becoming very happy. I get bad news, whoop, the, 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 the joy goes away. I'm planning on something, something changed, makes me frustrated. So uh, there's emotional motions all the time and it depends on what's going on. Now these emotional motions, what they do is they weaken you. Because the, the heart, the emotions, the way it works is if it's not stable, then it takes you to a, a, a place of instability which eventually weakens you. So really, when I want to strengthen the heart, when I want my heart to have menuchat nefesh, that it should be in a peace of quiet, is by controlling the motions of my emotions. Now, how can you do that? How can you control your heart? I mean, right now I'm getting good news. I can't hold myself from not being excited. And if I chas v'shalom get bad news, I can't hold myself from not being sad. You have to be uh, like a robot to do something like this. So how can you control your emotion? Your, uh, I will call it now the, the storms of your emotions that are attributed to your heart. <clears throat> it's uh, easy, but not so simple. In order for me to acquire the right amount of bitachon, which equals menuchat alev, peace, peace and quiet, how do I do that? When I told you that everything, the storm is in the heart, then you need to somehow overpower the heart. How do you overpower the heart? And then the Hasidic philosophy explains to us that moch shalit alalev. The heart controls the, the, the mind controls the heart. The heart doesn't control the mind, the mind controls the heart. So what do you need to do? You need to overpower your mind, your sechel, over the heart. We have to understand that the emotions that we have in our body, in, in, that we feel, that we attribute to the heart, it's the mind that births them. The intellect, not the heart. So I need to overpower the mind over my heart. How do I do this? How do I get real bitachon? The term to it is mochin nechonim, the right sechel. Now mochin... There's no way to really translate mochin, because if you translate it either to intellect or brain or... But it's not. It's not. Mochin, really, if you can want to uh, limit it, it's sechel, your, your, your mind, your thoughts, your intellect. The, more than that, one way of really defining what's mochin, and I don't know if there's a word in this in English, it's the all of my knowledge gathered in one place. Where do I acquire my knowledge? I read books, I experience things in life, people tell me things, I watch movies, my, my uh, uh, teachers in school, all day long, throughout my life, I'm absorbing information. False, true, right, wrong, it doesn't matter. But constantly I'm absorbing information, and like I told you, it can be done with my eyes, can be done with my ears, reading, learning, school time, everything. All my life experiences, all these uh, 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 moments, all that information that was processed for the last 20, 30, 40 years, that's the mochin. That, that is the, where all your uh, thought process, all your, I will call it, ideology, opinions, that's the mochin. Because if I take now a baby, and I put that baby in this country, come after 20 years, will be a certain type of individual. Take the same baby, put him in a different country, different surrounding, different everything, totally different person. Completely, completely different person. 
That says that all my life experiences at some point gather some type of knowledge. And again, most of it is false. If we're looking at the reality in our world, 90% of the information that you acquired in the last whatever years you are alive is false. Because in school, they taught you A, B, and C. False. The teacher, the, the uh, medical uh, institutions, they teach you one thing, not true. Then uh, Hollywood comes and teaches you other things. NASA comes and teaches you the, 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 the space. Each one comes and teaches you something. Put it all together, 90% of what you acquired in knowledge in the last, uh, uh, all your life, 90% of it is not true. But nevertheless, it designs your personality. It designs your being. And to a point that you, in some of the cases, can't undo it even. That's how bad the dam damage is. So all your life experiences, and your thoughts, and your memories, and your conversations, and everything is all concentrated in one place, and that is called mochin. And therefore I cannot translate it as intellect, or mind, or brain, because it's not. Because it's spiritual. It's not that I can say, oh, it's here. Now, very important thing to understand with the, with the mochin is that that's what's going to cause me to uh, uh, operate in a certain way what's in this uh, central intelligence uh, place. All my intelligence is centered in one place. And it's kind, kind of like cross-examining each other, interacting with each other, and I'm, then I come up to conclusions. That's why most of the world is screwed up. Because it's very easy to brainwash a person with so many different ways, and that's the mochin. To, uh, to, to sh change the mochin, phew, how can you change your life events? If a person, and let me be very extreme, let's say a child was beaten up by his uh, uh, teacher who is a rabbi. And many situations like this happen. After a hundred times of going through this uh, 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 molestation, torture, whatever it is, with no question that the child hates the uh, teacher, but everything the teacher represents, so if the teacher is observant, the child will hate the Torah, hate God, hate everything that has to do. Why? Because the, the ones who, 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 one who attacked me or hurt me, he represents that group. And I'm saying that from experience. I know many uh, men that were beaten up or raped by their rabbi when they were kids. And now, it doesn't matter what's going to happen. They don't want to hear about God or the Torah or anything. They're burnt. Why am I saying that? Because the child has memories from a hundred encounters. Can you erase these memories to change his mochin? It doesn't matter what you're going to do. He will not forget the experience of the, of, of the horrible uh, uh, act, and therefore his mochin is stuck. He cannot change it. You know what it takes to change such an experience? Huge, huge efforts. So why am I telling you all this? First of all, it's important that once and for all I clarify what's mochin. Mochin is not intellect, it's not sechel, it's not your brain. It's all your life experiences, gathered into one place and all mixed up. Very, very few people know how to organize their mochin and one of the only ways uh, that can be done is through, it's through Torah. But nevertheless, very, very hard to get your mochin aligned and healthy. So why did I say that? How, did you, how do you acquire, acquire the right bitachon? With the right mochin, with healthy mochin. Now, you can take past experiences, you cannot erase them, but you can, uh, I'll use now the term, you can design them a little bit, you can change them a little bit, and that will cause the person new mochin that will help him deal with situation. Now, if psychologists or psych psychiatrists will know this method, then they will be able to cure people. But they don't do it because they will lose a lot of money. You know, uh, uh, usually 
a professional individual, a lawyer, a, a psychiatrist, they don't like solving problems because then they lose a customer. You, they, they need the problems to continue because then they have a customer. But, but realistically, if you apply all these methods, thank you so much, if you apply all these methods in regards to working on your mochin, you can cure traumas, you can do whatever, whatever you want in the intellect. That's how powerful the brain is, but most people don't know how to use it or how to address it. But again, when I'm seeking to reach to a very high level of bitachon, the mochin has to be healthy. And only that, the mochin has to be right. When the mind is, co <laughs> is cluttered with so much lies and deceit, it's very hard to control the mochin. So, let me uh, continue by telling you that there is a verse in the book of Yirmiyahu, Jeremiah, uh, uh, chapter 17, verse 2, and it says, Baruch HaGever HaShivtach BaHashem. And what is the continuation? I'm sure you know. Ve'ayah Hashem Yivtachot. Famous verse. What does it mean? Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. The continuation of the verse, the Lord shall be his trust. Now in English, as usual, doesn't, doesn't, doesn't sound as nice as in Hebrew. Baruch HaGever HaShivtach BaShem, blessed is the man who trusts in Hashem, Hashem tells you, you want the feeling of bitachon, you do the first move. You do the first move, I'll do the rest. Baruch HaGever Asher Batach Bashem. You do the first move that I'm showing Hashem, I'm putting my trust in you. I'm afraid. I'm, 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 I, I don't know what to do, but Hashem, I'm putting my trust in you. Baruch HaGever Shivtach Bashem. Nobody's asking me or, or suggesting to me that I have to trust Hashem. I'm choosing, I'm saying, I'm Shem, it's hard for me, I'm very confused, I'm, I don't know what's going on, I don't know what's waiting for me, I'm putting all my trust in you. So Yirmiyahu says, Baruch HaGever HaShivtach BaShem. Kol HaKavod, amazing. You trusted HaShem, but since you made the first move, Vehaya HaShem Yivtacho. The Lord shall be His trust. Then HaShem says, ah, you showed me that you trust me this big, I will cover you with feelings of bitachon. Very simple. Hashem says, you do a little action shows bitachon towards me. Hashem will surround you with feelings of bitachon. Very simple. No need to now open books for 12 days. I just saved you now a year of reading Chovat HaLevavot, okay? Now, how do you do that? You need order. Everything has to have an order. In life, if something is done without order, it will, won't work out. Don't try it. Listen to experienced people. Anything in this world, physical, spiritual, emotional, it does not matter. If it doesn't have an order, it will not work. In order for me to receive this unbelievable feeling of trust from God, then I need to go through a certain order. And in, the, the, in order to get the, the order, then I need to know that there's order. I'm telling you this because I'm very observant when I look at people. Most people have zero order in their life. No order. Everything is chaotic. Now, to some cases, it's not too bad. Some personalities, some personalities need this freedom that today I'm here and tomorrow I'm there. But I'm not talking about personality. I'm talking about the order in your life. Most people, no order at all. That's why one of the strongest uh, uh, contributions of the Torah to your life is that you put, it puts your life in order. It tells you when to pray, how to eat and when, what to do when and how, that's why in many of the cases, it's very convenient that something is giving you the order. But 
It doesn't matter right now if you're a type of person that needs to be ordered or can p place the order on yourself. It's irrelevant. I'm just now talking about a certain concept. You take it to your life and use it how you find it the best. Life without order is chaos. That's it. It, does, it, it has nothing to do with the Torah right now. It can be in business. It can be in my, my uh, uh, self-improvement when it comes to sports or mu music, whatever it is. Some people, their, uh, lo their love, their thing that moves them in life is, is music. And uh, to learn or to play, that also requires order. It, any aspects of your life has to have order, especially the Torah. Now, why is that? Because Hashem created the world with order. It doesn't say in the Torah, on the third day, Hashem created the trees. On the fifth day, Hashem created animals. Oh, I forgot. On, on the first day, <laughs> on the first day, He first created the world. I mean, Hashem tells you, first day, second day, third day. Right? Yom Rishon. There's an order. Can you imagine if the world would be created without an order? Now why is that so important? Because order, for me, equals God. No order, no God. No God, no order. I run my life with order. If you would see, and it's not about showing off or something, if you would see what I squeeze in one day, can only be done if you're organized. If you're not organized, what I do in a day will take me a week. Why? Because when everything is ordered, when you start, when you finish, with some uh, buffers to, to, to fail. But if your life is not organized in a certain order, you'll, it will be chaotic. Very simple. How do you do that? And again, this is not a class now how you put your life in order. But nevertheless, why am I saying all this? Is for me, if I find a place with no order, for me it's a place that God doesn't exist. You understand where I'm going with this? And if chas v'shalom, a person will say there is no God, or I don't believe that there's God, then it doesn't matter what's going to happen, there will never be order in that person's life. Because the, the seder adifuyot, the, the, the priority list is wrong. It's wrong. So, first of all, I have to understand that this order that I'm talking about is all controlled by God. And that there's a creator, there's a, a creator that runs the show, and nothing is by chance and there's no mistakes. That's what I need to start understanding. The little step that I'm telling you that you need to do what Jeremiah, what Yirmiyahu tells you, you need to do one little step. You don't need to now convince Hashem how much you trust Him. You need to make the first step. Hashem will, 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 will bestow on you feelings of security that you won't worry about nothing. And only because you showed that place of trust in Hashem. What's that little step? You need to take yourself. For five minutes every day. You can do it ten minutes, you can do it an hour, you can do it in one second. It doesn't matter. But the practice is, like I told you the last class, you take five minutes out of your day and you only meditate on the fact that there's a creator to the world. The world didn't create itself. Nothing creates itself. Nothing in this world can do something for itself without the creator. He was, he is, he will be. No coincidence, no mistakes. Everything is the Kadosh Baruch Hu. In Hebrew, coincidence, you say mikre. The word coincidence is mikre. Because a lot of people say, what a coincidence, I ran into Moshe that afternoon. No. And mikre, there's no such thing as mikre. Mikre, the word mikre, which means uh, uh, coincidence, if you switch the order of the letters, it's Hashem Rakam. Hashem made it. That's it. Hmm? Yeah? 
And some say it's a roof mikrim. It doesn't matter. I'm talking about the, the idea. No coincidence. So, first, you have to understand that there's order in the world, so nothing happens by mistake. A lot of people are afraid now, especially because of the, the war or the situation, that they might die. Let me tell you a secret. If Hashem wants you dead, He doesn't need a war. If Hashem wants you to die, I wish you a long life. But if Hashem wants it for you to die, or something to happen, can you do anything about it? You think we need a war to kill people? Hashem can do whatever He wants. So it's actually a very deep, whole borderline of heresy to feel feelings of, I, I might die, or, or, or what if I die? Now, if you're worried that you're going to die because you're worried about your loved ones and who's going to take care of your kids, that's a different worry. That's a legit wor worry. And I wouldn't say worry. You need to plan the right way. Yes, you need to plan the right way. I have kids. They depend on me. I need to prepare myself. That if chas v'shalom, something happens to me, my kids will be taken care of. But let's go back to our little practice. It doesn't take long, as in doesn't require much. You need to sit five minutes a day and just meditate on the fact that there is a creator to the world. Now, a lot might tell me, what are you talking about? I'm, I, I was born observant. Of course I know there's a creator to the world. Do you feel that your bitachon is here? No. So, do this practice. If you come and tell me, I know there's a creator, and I'm very happy, my uh, heart is relaxed, and I have great bitachon. So this class is not for you. Turn the video off and go away. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to you if you don't have bitachon, or if you have a little bit of bitachon, if you have a little bit, or a little bit of uncertainty, take five minutes a day. And again, I'll repeat myself. You meditate on the fact, no phone. <laughs> no phone, better not in the street where people can wave to you and you... <coughs> Go somewhere where you do your bodhidut. Five minutes that you breathe in, breathe out. There's a creator to the world. The creator of the world has a plan. When you create something, there's plans. Like an architect, like an engineer. Which means that everything is planned. There's no mistakes by the Creator. Everything that happens to me, that's the will of Hashem. You talk with yourself five minutes. That shows the Master of the Universe that you have that little effort that you're showing. And it can be done in other ways, by the way. It's not limited to what I'm telling you. I'm just telling you to do this for five minutes a day. If you really do it for five minutes a day, I guarantee to you, within a few weeks, you'll feel a completely different level of bitachon. How would you feel the level of bitachon? It's not that you're going to stand in the street when there's a barrage of missiles, but you're calm. And when you go to sleep, you fall asleep fast. And I noticed one thing, I noticed it on people. Most people are, are very <coughs> tense, and you can see it on their body. You don't see it when you're tense. You can hold your body in a tense way for 20 minutes. You don't even notice it. And if you, suddenly everything comes out. I sometimes look at people and I see who's relaxed and who's, in Hebrew it's called dauch, like charged. Why are you so tense? What's, what's the problem? I'm not talking about radiation that can make you tense right now. But the fact is that when you have a lot of bitachon, you're not tense. You're relaxed. It can be a very difficult situation. You still have joy and, and happiness. I mean, you're not jumping up and down. So just remember a few things. First of all, there's a creator to the world that runs the world in a precise order. Nothing is a chance, by, by chance, nothing is a coincidence, nothing is a mistake. Everything that Hashem wants to happen, that's what happens. Everything is planned. And the minute that I'll show some positive behavior in regards to that I'm trusting Hashem, then the boomerang will come back at me in the power of Hashem, and exactly like I told you, Baruch HaGever Asher Botach Hashem, then Hashem will come back, Hashem Hashem will be the one who surrounds you with the feeling of Bitachon. You don't need to invent feelings. 
People think that they have to do something now in... No. It has to come from within. You approach to God one little step and he will do the rest. Very simple.